الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وآله وصحبه أما بعد my dear brothers and sisters my dear children السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته today is the first day of Ramadan 1441 the 24th of April 2020 May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you and empower you and enable us all to fast this month. May Allah accept our fast and accept our prayers and grant us his highest station in paradise, inshallah. I'm starting from Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 183. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaitan rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, O you who believe, the message here is to the believers. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum al-siyamu kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O you who believe, fasting is prescribed to you as it was prescribed to those before you that you may learn self-restraint, that you may ward off evil, you may fear Allah, you may become a righteous person. In verse 184, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَامٍ أُخَرٍ Fasting for a fixed number of days. But if anyone of you is ill فمن كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر or on a journey فعدة من أيام أخر the prescribed number should be made up from days later وعلى الذين يطيقونه and for those who can do it with hardship with difficulty with, with, with great uh, uh, hardship وعلى الذين يطيقونه فدية طعام مسكين So you have to pay a ransom You have to feed a poor person For every day you could not fast فمن تطوع خيرا فهو خير لا If you would like to give more You can give more You will get the reward for whatever you give وأن تصوموا خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون Fasting will be more beneficial for you if you would only knew. Let me let me try to explain this part of the verse. It doesn't mean because I'm finding it extremely difficult and I can't fast. Then Allah is saying here to me, it's better to fast. No, this is misinterpretation of the verse. Because it's better for you and it is better for 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 your life. Uh, the next life after death that you fast if you only knew the reward you would be getting. So this has nothing to do with the previous uh, 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 concession that if I am on a travel, on a journey, or if I'm not well, uh, I have the right to uh, feed uh, a poor person if I can't fast at all, or I have to make up the days later. Uh, so you can say this is an encouragement for those who missed some days in Ramadan, that they must make up the days because if you fast, better for you. Then in verse 185, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the fast of the month of Ramadan. شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنَ I mean, this is, this is a statement by Allah telling us that in the month of Ramadan, the revelation of the Quran started in one of the last Ten nights of the month is known as Laylatul Qadr or Layla Mubaraka, as mentioned in Surah Al Dukhan, the smoke, chapter 44, and in Surah Al Qadr. Shahru Ramadan al Ladi unzila fihi al Quran, hudan lin nasi wa bayinatin min al huda wal furqan. So the month of Ramadan is the month in which the revelation started to come down on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Prophet. Gabriel, uh, sorry, uh, Angel Gabriel, alayhi salatu was the link between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and 
the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam. Shahru Ramadan al-ladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an hudan lil-nasi wa bayinatin min al-huda wal-furqan. So the Qur'an is a guide to mankind, also clear signs for guidance and judgment between right and wrong. For Qur'an, something to uh, differentiate between what is right and what is wrong. فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُوبُ So if you witness the month, if you are alive during the month of Ramadan, then you have to fast this month. وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيدًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ and if any one of you was unwell or on a journey, فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَامِ الْأُخَرِ This is exactly like what Allah mentioned in the previous verse as well. فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ وَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيدًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَامِ الْأُخَرِ Then you will have to make up the days you missed later in the year when you are either feeling better or you are not on a journey. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمْ الْيُسْرِ Allah wants ease for you. Allah doesn't want to complicate your lives or, or put any burden on you. وَلَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمْ الْيُسْرِ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمْ الْعُسْرِ Allah wants ease for you. He does not wish hardship or difficulties for you. وَلِتُكْمِلُ الْعِدَّةِ And to complete the prescribed period and to glorify وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ And to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the guidance he gave you and perhaps or perchance you may be grateful and give thanks so you may be thankful and you may be grateful so let me read the english translation at one go now and try to uh, point out certain uh, requirements here in this verse ramadan is the month in which was sent down the Quran as a guide to mankind and the clear signs for guidance and judgment between right and wrong. So every one of you who is present at his home during that month should spend it in fasting. But if anyone is ill or on a journey, the prescribed period should be made up by days later. Allah intends Allah intends every facility for you. He does not want to put you to difficulties. He wants you to complete the prescribed period and to glorify him in that he has guided you and third chance you shall be grateful. Shahru Ramadan, the month of Ramadan is the only month in the 12 months in the Islamic calendar which is mentioned in the Quran. But why did Allah ordain on us the fast of Ramadan. Why not, for example, Rabi'ul al Awal? Rabi'ul al Awal is the month in which the Prophet ﷺ was born, he died in Rabi'ul al Awal, he immigrated from Mecca to Medina in Rabi'ul al Awal. So, why not Rabi'ul al Awal? Why not Rajab, when the Prophet ﷺ went, went on a journey by night and the prayers became obligatory on that night? Or why not Sha'ban, when the Qibla changed? from Jerusalem to Mecca, or why not the month of Hajj? The reason for this, and it's very obvious reason, that Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed. The revelation started in the month of Ramadan, so Allah wants us to fast this month to attract our attention to the importance of the Quran. So we need to make an effort to study the Quran, to understand the Quran, to apply what we have read and what we have understood. Now I'm going to read some of the uh, prophetic traditions regarding uh, the month of Ramadan and the reward we get from the fast. To define fasting, fasting, we fast from dawn to sunset. Dawn is about an hour and a half or two hours before sunrise, and it is, uh, it depends upon where you are on planet Earth, uh, whether it's winter, whether it's summer. So, a siyam is to abstain from something. Uh, if, if you read the Oxford Dictionary, it says, uh, fast, abstain from all or some kinds of food, 
as religious observance or in sign of mourning. We fast from food, we fast from drink, and we fast from the fulfillment of any sexual desires. We fast from dawn to sunset. The Prophet وسلم, said in this hadith, uh, the first part of the hadith is Qudsi, which means Allah is saying it. Every action of the son of Adam is for him. But fasting is for me and I reward it accordingly. Now the, the, the second part here is what the Prophet was saying. والصيام جنة. الصيام acts as a shield from evil. فإذا كان يوم صوم أحدكم If you are fasting فلا يرفث No foul language ولا يصخب Not to raise his voice ولا يجهل Not to behave foolishly فإن شاتمه أحد أو قاتله If anyone would provoke you or reviles you or fights with you say إني صائم مرتين Just to remind you to, uh, sorry to remind yourself that you are fasting you cannot respond to uh, this type of insults. Just say it twice, I am fasting, I am fasting, and then you don't respond at all. وَالَّذِي نَفْسُ مُحَمَّدْ بِيَدِهِ Prophet ﷺ is saying, and I swear by the one who has the soul of Muhammad in his hand. لَخَلُوفُ فَمِ الصَّائِمْ The breath of someone who is fasting. You know, because of the bacteria in the mouth when we are fasting, it gives a very bad smell. So the Prophet ﷺ is saying, I was swearing actually by Allah that the breath of someone who's, fa who's fasting الْمِسْكِ It is better in the sight of Allah on the day of judgment from the smell of the mask. So don't be embarrassed that, that, that your, your breath is not, is not nice. وَلِلصَّائِمِ فَرْحَتَانِ And the person who fasts has two occasions to rejoice. When he breaks his fast at the end of the day, he is so happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala empowered him or enabled him to fast and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided some sustenance for him to break his fast with. So this is the first occasion for him to rejoice. And the second one, وَإِذَا لَقِيَ رَبَّهُ فَرِحَ بِصَوْمِهِ And when he meets his Lord, when he leaves this life, he will rejoice to meet his Lord because he will find a great reward for him for his fast. This hadith was reported by Ahmad, Muslim, and in Nasai. In another narration in Al-Bukhari and Abu Dawood, As-Siyamu Jannah, again, fasting is a shield. فَإِذَا كَانَ أَحَدُكُمْ صَائِمًا If any of you is fasting, then he should not... Uh, 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 he should not insult anyone or, or raise his voice or behave foolishly. Very similar to the previous hadith. The only difference, uh, it says at the end, He leaves his food, his desire, his drink for my own sake, to please me. Fasting is for me. And it is me who gives the reward for it. وَالْحَسَنَةُ بِعَشْرَةِ أَمْثَالِهَا Every good deed will receive ten times similar. <clears throat> In another hadith, a man called Abu Umama came to the Prophet and he said to him, command me to do something good which will guarantee Jannah for me. قَالَ عَلَيْكَ بِالصَّوْمِ فَإِنَّهُ لَا عِدْلَ لَهُ Stick to fasting because it has no equivalent to it. So, this man came again another time and asked the same question. And the Prophet ﷺ said, عَلَيْكَ بِالصِّيَامِ Stick to fasting. رواه أحمد والنسائي والحاكم وصحاح. In another hadith in Al-Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ لِلْجَنَّةِ بَابًا يُقَالُ لَهُ الرَّيَانِ You know, Jannah, paradise, has eight gates. Eight gates. And... Uh, the hill has seven levels. 
like an underground car park. And one of the gates of the Jannah is called ar -Rayan. And on the day of judgment, a caller, an angel, will say, O oh, you who used to, be, to fast, come this way. So all those who used to fast in this life will be ushered or directed towards the gate, which is known as ar -Rayan. And when the last one enters, the gate will be closed, as stated in Bukhari and Muslim. Now, in Islam, we have uh, three types of fast. For the compulsory fast, we have three types. If you start from the beginning, we can say we have obligatory fast and we have voluntary fast. And the obligatory fast has three different types of fast. The fast of Ramadan, or if you made a vow to fast, then it becomes an obligation, or kafara, which means expiation. You did something wrong, and one of the ways of correcting the wrong you did is by fasting. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he ordained the fast on us, and he ordained the fast of the month of Ramadan, it became an obligation on Monday, the second day of Sha'ban, in the second year of Hijrah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the ummah something like, four week notice that you are going to start to fast Ramadan after four weeks. So Ramadan, the fast became obligatory on us from Monday, the second day in Sha'ban, the second year of Hijrah. Let me mention some of the virtues of Ramadan and the deeds done during it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said when Ramadan came, he gave a speech. قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ شَهْرٌ مُبَارَكٌ A blessed month has come to you. افترض الله عليكم صيامة. Allah ordained on you or, or uh, the, the fast of this month. تُفَتَّحُ فِيهِ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ During this month, the gates of paradise will be opened. وَتُغْلَقُ فِيهِ أَبْوَابُ الْجَحِيمِ The gates of the hellfire will be closed. وَتُغَلُّ فِيهِ الشَّيَاطِينِ Satans will be chained. فِيهِ لَيْلَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٍ In it there is a night which is better in the reward than 1,000 months. Man hurima khayraha faqat hurim. Whoever is deprived of its good is really deprived of something great. And in another hadith, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the gates of the hellfire will be closed, the gates of the Jannah will be opened, and Satan's will be chained, and a malak, a, an angel will say, Ya baghil khayra akshir, O you who intend, O you who intend to do good deeds, have glad tidings. Wa ya baghil sharra akshir, O you who intend to do evil, refrain, stop, until the end of Ramadan. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, the five daily prayers, and Friday to Friday, and Ramadan to, Ram to Ramadan, to the next Ramadan, will expiate they will expiate any sins committed between them as long as the grave sins or the major sins being avoided and this is reported by Muslim and Prophet ﷺ also said من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه whoever will fast Ramadan with faith and seeks Allah's pleasure and reward, all his past sins will be purged, will be cleaned off. This is reported by Ahmed and the companions of the Sunnah. So let me read this hadith again. Man sama Ramadana iman and wahtisaba. Whoever will fast Ramadan with faith and seeks Allah's pleasure and reward. All his past sins, all his previous sins will be purged. Uh, so what are the essential elements of the fast? What we call arkan as uh, We have two essential 
elements. Number one, to abstain from those acts that break the fast from dawn to sunset. So no food, no drink, no fulfillment of any sexual desire. The second element is the intention, the niya. You must have the niya that you are going to fast. Some people are of the opinion that you do it every day. Um, every evening I am saying tomorrow, inshallah, I'm going to fast. And another opinion says if you are going to fast Ramadan, you have the intention, the niya of fasting the whole month, then may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it in this way. So who is obliged to fast? According to the majority of the scholars, you have to be a sane Muslim, adult, uh, not traveling, and for women, she has to be pure, clean from, from, from childbirth, bleeding or the monthly period. You have to be healthy. So if you are an adult, Muslim, healthy, sane, not traveling, not on, not on a journey, uh, not uh, 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 suffering from any illness, which would prevent you from fasting, then you are obliged to fast. And here we're talking about uh, the fast of Ramadan here. Some people, some people are allowed not to fast, but they must pay a ransom. So those who are permitted not to fast, but must pay a ransom for not fasting. Anyone who is chronically ill, anyone uh, not expected to recover, uh, and they cannot fast at all during any time of the year, whether it's winter or summer, uh, old people, frail people, people who are doing a very hard job and they cannot, there is no other job but that one, and they cannot uh, fast. So these people are allowed not to fast, but they must pay a ransom. They must feed a number of poor people equivalent to the days, the number of the days they couldn't fast. And if they haven't got the means, then they don't do it. So the first group, those who are permitted not to fast, but must pay a ransom for not fasting. The second group, those who are permitted not to fast, but later they must make up the days they missed. This is someone is temporary ill, uh, not chronically ill, temporary Ill illness, or someone on a journey. So when they are back home, they have to make up the days they miss. And when this person, the one who is not feeling well, he will recover, then he must make up the uh, days he missed. And the third group, those who must not fast and must make up the missed days. We are talking about women who are having their period or post childbirth bleeding. It, they are not allowed to fast. They will have to make up the days later and they don't pay a ransom for the days they couldn't fast because if they are healthy, they don't do that. So the first group those who are permitted not to fast, but must pay a ransom for not fasting. This applies to the people who are chronically ill, people who cannot fast at all, at any time of the year. And the second group, those who are permitted not to fast, but later they must make up the days they missed, someone who's on a journey or someone who's not well. And the third group, those who must not fast and must make up the missed days. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين فاستغفروا إنه غفور رحيم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكننا من الخاسرين ربنا أمنا بما أنزلت واتبعنا الرسول فاكتبنا مع الشاهدين ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعفو عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين 
اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم ارحم موتانا اللهم ارحم موتانا اللهم اخذ الدين عن المدينين وفرج هم المهمومين ونفس كرب المكروبين وفك اسر المأسورين وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد واله وصحبه اجمعين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر ان الانسان لفي خسر الا الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته